Linda Perez has been a South Texas rancher for 19 years, owner of L&M Beef for the last three. And before she was a rancher, her life was scattered in various countries, as well as various professions, including education, agriculture, healthcare, paleontology, and scientific research. She worked in several African countries, also Peru, and at Harvard and Johns Hopkins universities. Each activity leads naturally into the ranching, although seemingly random, it says in a separate, at the time, upon reflection, it reveals a very connected life path. Please welcome Linda Perez. Linda. Good evening. My golly, what a bunch of great presentations to have to follow. Um, before I start, I want to thank my son-in-law, Johnny Walker, for the incredibly excellent photographs and videograph um, that you'll see in my presentation tonight. And I also want to thank my daughter and granddaughter for um, all three of them, their commitment and help with the ranch. Um, I decided being a Texan, one should have a ranch, and this is how I went about it. <laughs> Speed. Space. Okay. <laughs> Remember all the had to do's in your life? Had to run and hula hoop at the same time? Had to fly? Had to fill a passport with stamps? <laughs> had to live in Africa? Had to have a, a ranch in Texas. How do you have a ranch in Texas? You inherit, buy, or build one. I built. And um, this became the future L&M Ranch. It's about 300 acres, rolling hills, big live oak trees at the end of a dirt road south of San Antonio. At first, there were so many things to consider and build, a house, a well, a barn, to name a few. Each required decisions and detailed planning. Yet I often learned post-construction what I should have done, <laughs> like site the barn where water did not gather during heavy rains. <laughs> Water is life, markedly so on a ranch. I have three tanks, nine water troughs, a windmill, seasonal rivers, piped water, and a water well, but still rain is essential to sustain life. Unrelentingly, water requires constant attention and concern. Fencing and gates by subdividing pastures make better management of grass possible. In rotational grazing, the herd is moved every few days to a new pasture. More pastures mean more work, more cost. Every Christmas, I gave myself a new fence. <laughs> <laughs> the six most crucial yeah. pieces, <laughs> the six most crucial pieces of equipment for a ranch, in my opinion, are a tractor with a hay fork and a shredder, a four-wheel drive pickup truck, good working pens, wire cutters, and a pocket knife that holds an edge. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of animals have resided on this ranch. An impressive array of wildlife is ever present from ants and badgers to javelinas and wild turkeys. It's the domestic animals, however, the cats, dogs, cows, horses, sheep, um, who make the family. Aww. Cows are the heart of the ranch. They're the heart of the herd. Most of mine were great mothers, incredibly intelligent and compassionate, calving every year, rarely needing assistance and raising calm, fast-growing calves, knowing each cow and calf is essential. I named each cow, I named each calf. And pick your bull wisely. <laughs> half the genetics to your calf crop. <laughs> he influences birth weight, calving ease, disposition, rate of growth, fertility, quality of the calves and the beef they become. Ultimately, a rancher is a grass farmer. The more grass you have, the more calves you can raise. Um, I learned a lot about growing grass over the years and then I needed to learn more. Some things you control, some you don't. Rain, you don't. Hay. Hay is grass that has been cut, dried, baled, and stored. It feeds the herd when grass is scarce. 
Making hay is an art, and making the right decisions for hay requires experience, luck, and clairvoyance. Good hay producers have my utmost respect. Mother's milk over time is replaced by grass and other plants. By seven to nine months, calves are almost exclusively grazers and no longer need milk. It is then time to wean, to separate the calves from the cows with minimal stress until the mother's milk dries up. Heifers are girl calves, and aren't they gorgeous? They should be close to mature before being given access to a bull. Having a first calf around two and a half years of age, generally considered late in Texas, usually guarantees low risk, problem-free calving, and good maternal health. To raise them right, calves should be castrated early, vaccinated on time, and weaned late in a low-stress manner. I personally needed to be able to promise a good life from birth to death to each of the animals or discontinue ranching. I became certified animal welfare approved. One decision I had each year <laughs> as a rancher was which calves to keep, which calves to sell, when and where. You can sell either by public auction or by private treaty. Public auction, you decide when and where to sell. It's fast, but it's harder on the animals. By deciding to sell beef instead of cattle, I, for, I didn't have that decision for a while. Um, the Pearl Farmers Market invited me to become um, one of their vendors. So I found a processor, obtained permits and labels, studied beef cuts, got equipment, signage, and became L&M grass-fed beef. Improving my skills, both as a preparer of beef and a potter, a connection between beef and clay grew, leading to clay cookware. L&M grass-fed beef evolved into the Bull in China shop. Oh, Local <laughs> chefs agree. <laughs> 2011, the worst drought in Texas history. No rain, no grass, no hay. Tanks dried up, temperature soared, dust prevailed. I had to sell. Good buyers appeared, easing the pain of selling. All the animals were taken to Colorado. The chapter of my life on a cattle ranch ended. The future of the ranch is unknown. Helped by the continuing rains of 2012, the ranch slowly is being restored and thoughts for new uses form daily. A ceramic studio recently was built and in the fall, the hay barn will shelter a wood fire kiln. With time, the future will reveal more. Until then, we get on with life, watch the sun rise and set, take walks, remember the cows with great fondness, give thanks and wait. I'm very glad ranching was one of my had-to-dos, and I'm very glad I did it. <laughs>